Hey friends, Dr. Motley here, and in this post, we are going to talk about SIBO and its effect on your biochemistry. Can small intestinal bacteria have an adverse effect on your biochemical reactions of the body? Yes, it can, such as digestion, hormone production, or even neurotransmitter balance. We're gonna talk about some simple herbals that can actually help get rid of the SIBO, and then we're gonna talk about some physical therapies or areas of the spine that you can use to help alleviate the symptoms in your biochemistry. Small intestinal bacterial overgrowth is when large intestinal bacteria such as Klebsiella, Strep or Staph, uh, Clostridium, even E. coli migrate back into the small intestine because of a weakened ileocecal valve or damaged valves between the small intestine and large intestine. They migrate back, they overproduce or reproduce heavily, producing toxins that get into your bloodstream that give you the symptoms such as brain fog, joint pain, digestive issues, hormonal imbalance, neurotransmitter imbalance, all these symptoms because of the toxicities. Now in the post, I give you some descriptions, I give you some main points of the things in your biochemistry that SIBO can affect, but I wanna go over a few of them just to give you a quick overview, how something so small as bacteria can affect your biochemistry. First off, when we're talking about small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, we're talking about the gases that certain bacteria on the large intestine, when they migrate in, produce in your small intestine. So certain types of bacteria produce hydrogen or hydrogen sulfide gas. Certain types of bacteria produce methane. It all depends on when they eat a polysaccharide, a sugar, and then they ferment it. When they ferment it, they give off gas. Now, if you produce methane gas, methane can do what? Cause constipation. So you have a natural wave called a cleansing wave that goes down your small intestine to help push unused food particles through the small intestine to move into the large intestine. When you produce methane gas, it actually causes contractions or peristaltic contractions in the opposite direction. It actually moves food back up into the small intestine towards the top of the digestive tract. That's why people get bloated and push out in their stomach and they can never release the gas because the methane causes contractions in the opposite way. It's a big study in IBS or irritable bowel syndrome types of symptoms. So methane causes constipation, causes bloating. Where does the gas go then? It goes up north, it'll go through your breath, through the lungs, sometimes through the skin, instead of going down south. So if you have methane, you'll have constipation. If you produce hydrogen or hydrogen sulfide, you're more likely to have diarrhea, irritation of the intestinal walls. So if you have hydrogen being produced, you'll have constipation, I mean, you'll have diarrhea. So you'll have a mixture sometimes. Why? It tells you what type of bacteria may be present in the body. Lots of good study with it. The main point is get rid of the SIBO, you get rid of the symptoms. If toxicity is then in the blood, Overproduced toxicities will actually put stress on your liver, which then can put pressure on your methylation. Phase one, phase two, de detox of the liver. So your liver then gets overcharged. So your methylation processes can be, get screwed up, which affects repair, recycling, and actually the building of tissue within the body, because that's what methylation does. See how that bacteria can affect toxicity, put pressure on your liver, and affect almost every other cycle through the methylation cycle being skewed by the bacteria. Well, let's just get rid of the bacteria, and it'll help take pressure off the liver. Now, number two is we're talking about estrogen or hormone imbalance. There are certain types of bacteria that are naturally there in the small intestine to help you what? Break down and help use estrogen. They call it the estrobolome or estrobolome. Now, it's a big study that's happening within hormone and therapies with hormones associated with bacteria. So the estrobolome is basically you have certain bacteria that produce enzymes that help break down estrogens to make them free forms to go into your blood to actually attach to estrogen receptor sites to help run the systems or the processes that estrogens are supposed to, like fat metabolism, fat distribution, the um, buildup of certain reproductive organs. That's what estrogen does. Now these bacteria basically help produce an enzyme, if I can say it right, beta-glucuronidase. Anyway, these enzymes basically help unconjugate estrogens and help them become free floating. So let's say you have a diet that's not very favorable to the small intestine and these bacteria get injured or they're not they're dying off or they're not being able to do their full function. You can have an overproduction of beta glucuronidase or an underproduction depending on the imbalance of the flora in your intestines. Remember, it can all come down to how much sugar you eat and the imbalance in your diet. So if the bad flora come in and overtake the good flora, you may not produce enough of that beta-glucuronidase. But if you basically feed that bacteria, the one that does produce beta-glucuronidase a little too much, you may overproduce the enzyme. So there has to be the right balance of this enzyme to help what? Create the right balance of estrogen production and metabolism. 
So it's key to help keep that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth from going into the small intestine so your hormone levels are good. Now we're talking about how estrogen affect things such as PCOS, endometriosis, even prostate or ovary cancers. That's how severe that these things can overgrow because there's a huge study in it now, guys. If you have a diet that's high in carbs, high in sugars, you can actually affect your body's ability to break down estrogens properly. That's why I always tell my patients, if you actually have a PCOS, ovary issues, prostate issues, you have to cut out the sugars because we have to balance the SIBO. Does that make sense, guys? You wanna have a healthy balance of the beta-glucuronidase. Check it out. I attached a post from Chris um, Presser about this uh, imbalance, and it was a great article, guys. Check it out. It even goes further in depth about estrogen imbalances from SIBO. What are the simple things you and I could do to help? I posted some things from Supreme Nutrition products that I've seen do really well. Simple and easy, but I wanted to go over a couple of them. I always go to Chinese Coppice or Golden Thread Supreme. I always try to go to Noni or Neem, such as Malia Supreme or Mirinda Supreme. There are three great general broad antimicrobials that can help cleanse the SIBO. I also throw in there, guys, reishi mushroom. Reishi mushroom is very cleansing to the kidneys and to the liver. It actually helps what? With the cleansing of the bacteria, killing it off, helps the kidneys and the liver cleanse it out and flush it out. Now there's mangista in there. Mangista is a cousin of turmeric, which helps with anti-inflammatory to help to get the inflammation out of the gut. And I also talk about macuna. Macuna, or yeah, not a macuna, mimosa pudica, mimosa pudica. Mimosa pudica is a scrubber. It helps cleanse the walls of the intestines. So if you have any small intestinal bacteria or any type of biofilm, it'll go and cleanse the walls out. Now you don't take all of these at once. Remember, I always say this, find the ones that resonate with you, Check out their website, read the information, investigate it, see which one resonates with you. Start off slow, do half the dosage, see how it affects you. It should help you poop better, it should help you sleep better, and it should help you give you sustained energy. Then you can add other ones that you think that can help you. But I've seen many individuals look at these supplements, try one, then add another one in, and have good results. But please investigate these or ask your primary care physician, your holistic practitioner, to check you on these. Also, you can try collagen, bone broth, you can try cer certain forms of glutamine that help heal the intestinal walls to give a favorable environment to the gut flora. It's on the post, guys. Check it out. But remember, you can get somebody to, uh, to test it on you. Now, the other thing is, whenever you have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, you can have problems in the thoracic spine, the mid-spine, such as T4, T5, T6, and the T9 vertebra. You can also have problems in T10. Now, you can also go down to the lumbar, which is L1, L2, and even down to the sacrum, S2. These areas can be chronically tight, chronically fixated, hot, inflamed, discs that get swollen in these areas because of the small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Now try to find a good practitioner, a good applied kinesiologist, a good massage therapist, an acupuncturist, somebody who does SOT, sacral occipital technique, or a good osteopath, physical therapist. Find somebody who can get these areas out of fixation and work on them manually to get the nerve flow to the small intestine to help what? Re-energize that what? Cleansing wave, get the cleansing wave going in the body. That's what we wanna do. Help it with a manual adjustment or a manual therapy and throw the supplements in there or do what your primary holistic healthcare practitioner advises you to do. Remember, there's many ways, but I don't wanna be general, guys. I'm telling you, these supplements, investigate them. I've seen them get rid of SIBO in so many good ways. And then you can actually start to what? Help with estrogen imbalance. Now there's a few things I always recommend. If you have estrogen imbalance, check out the COMT gene, check out the CBS gene, check out the vitamin D receptors. Those are three genes and MTHFR. If you have any of those genetic markers, find out if you do. Go to myhappygenes.com, get a gene test, see if you have any defects in these genes and get the nutritional um, uh, report. And that can then do what? Tell you what nutrition you would help that help you stabilize this, these genetic expressions to help you break down estrogens even better. Okay, guys? Those are some simple advice things. I'm telling you, minerals, vitamins, these herbals, and what? Some manual therapy. I would even advise, you know, at times maybe getting a colonic or two, you know, here and there. So I hope this helps, guys. This is a lot of advice. I put that post uh, that, that article with the post. I want you guys to investigate Supreme Nutrition product therapies with their products. And guys, if you have any questions, check out, I have a link on Linktree underneath my bio if you wanna know where those supplements are. So check it out, guys. You can just shoot, shoot over to an Amazon store or something like that. My, my team helped me with it and you can get the supplements there. But guys, I hope you're having a great day. I hope this helps. I hope it's plenty of information. Remember, beta glucuronidase and methane and hydrogen. If you get rid of the bad bacterias, if you stabilize them with what I just mentioned, you'll help get rid of the constipation, the bloating, help balance some of the estrogens, all right? And then maybe throw a gene test in there to help even get further. We wanna know more about you, your, your uniqueness, okay guys? 
Hey friends, Dr. Motley here, and this week we are talking about how SIBO, small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, can affect the biochemistry of the body. So one of my patients gave me the privilege of checking some indicators on her to see how there is some small intestinal bacterial overgrowth that could be associated with different chemical outcomes. For example, whenever I test the acupuncture points and some of the reflex points for the small intestine with biofeedback, I find an indication that there is some imbalance within the small intestine point. Now, referral points refer to how the small intestine can have um, a referral or reference to another organ. In this case, it goes over to the side where this pancreas is, so it means blood sugar. Also, upon examination, I found down here in the pelvic region, the two points that are associated with the ovaries, such as the um, pericardium circulation, sex meridian, and acupuncture. So ovaries, small intestine, pancreas. So what we're trying to do is find out which small intestinal bacteria could have migrated from the large intestine back into the small intestine because the toxins can then get into the portal system, the blood flow, circulate around the body, giving off toxins, getting to the lymph nodes, causing things like lethargy, slowing it down to the metabolism, even affecting hormonal cycles, can give breakouts, different things like that. Now, when we talk about affecting the cycle, I talked to the patient and she said that her cycles have been for the last six months a little shorter than normal, between 20 and 24 days. So we know that there could could be some toxicity from the small intestinal bacteria that could actually be spilling over and then maybe there's some overgrowth as well in the reproductive organs causing some weakness within the ovaries or any other reproductive area. Now the part that comes in with the pancreas is the patient did inform me that she's been eating a little more sugars and starches lately so when she eats it her pancreas is overwhelmed because it has to work overtime to break down the sugars. But the sugars could feed certain types of bacteria, the SIBO. So we're gonna check the muscles that are associated. So we're gonna test the muscles that are associated with the pancreas and the spleen, and also with the ovaries. So in kinesiology, the latissimus muscles are associated. So we're gonna have the patient hold it really close to your side and hold as I pull, hold, and it will not stay stabilized. That's the latissimus. It means that there's some weakness within the organ causing some dysfunction within the nerve and blood flow that goes to this, this muscle. Now down here, we're gonna check the G medius muscle, which is on the side of the hip, and we're gonna see if it stays stable because this is a referral to the L4 vertebra in S1, L4 to S1, and that is usually also the same nerve that feeds the ovaries. So hold the leg out here, contract the hip muscle, and hold tight as I push in. There it goes. She can't hold that very well. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work on the ileocecal valve. We're gonna work on a low back vertebra that's out of alignment, L4, L5. And we're gonna see if we can strengthen up this area and help balance some SIBO, but help her hormones and help her pancreas, blood sugar and hormones. So we have the patient face down, of course, and we're using a blocking system in SOT, sacral occipital technique called a category one. So what we're trying to do is untwist her pelvis, take pressure off the lumbar spine, but the patient had indications of constriction right here and in the nerves right here. And all these nerves can feed into the small intestine. So we're trying to require, uh, remove any type of blockage between the spine and the small intestine. Adjusted that back into, the, into place. And so what I do is I try to find any extra frequencies that would indicate another dysfunction in the body. And she is showing that there is a blood flow issues in the lower extremity. So there is a lower extremity that is out of alignment that is not allowing her pelvis to stay in place, but that is actually keeping her lumbar spine in distortion, not allowing it to feed the small intestine to allow it to heal. Check camera ready. We're gonna go into the ankle and there's some tender points and she can tell, right, patient, that that is pretty tender right there. And so, um, what we do is we take this percussion gun and we're gonna go in here and we're gonna realign this to help realign the pelvis. When we press here, those little uh, indicators, those little strikes tell me that the uh, pelvis is done. For the post, I'm gonna show you that we did rebalance some indicators for the small intestinal bacterial level growth. We're gonna see if the muscles related to the pancreas are strong or not. Keep the elbow straight here and hold as I start to pull slightly. Hold and nice and strong, nice nice and solid. Hold real tight as I start to lightly pull and we're gonna see as we increase the pressure, we strengthen up the muscles associated with that area. She also tested positively for Wild Greens, which is a green drink, and with Olive Leaf Supreme, which we're gonna have her do a small dosage of this in the next two weeks to help flush out the rest of the small intestinal bacteria. And another thing is if these bacteria can overgrow, it can hinder how her body naturally in the small intestine with the use of good lactobacillus or bifidobacterium should break down estrogens. If you don't break down estrogens, the excess estrogens are gonna 
can be deposited into the hips, the breasts, the shoulders. And so people can get weight gain unexpectedly because they actually add more estrogen into their fat cells. She indicated to me that she may get up seven pounds quickly and then lose it. Maybe the fluctuation within the small intestinal bacteria is not breaking down the estrogens efficiently. You see how it can all work together with the biochemistry.